Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Israelites, there are two types of fear, the reverential fear of the most high and the spirit of fear that stems from the kingdom of darkness. What is fear? The heathens dictionary defined fear as an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. The world has embedded in our minds that fear is an emotion. Israelites, fear is not an emotion, but a spirit. The scriptures reveal to us that fear is a spirit. Not only does 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 reveal to us that fear is a spirit, but the Most High did not give us the spirit of fear. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Israelites, in order for you to understand the world you live in, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit revealing truth to you and informing you of the things to come. Do not depend on the wisdom of this world. The world defines fear as an emotion. The words of the Most High say fear is a spirit. Whom are you going to believe? Israelites, every personality trait is a spirit. Division, poverty, jealousy, greed, lust, pride, and many other emotions and personality traits are all spirits. Spirits are disembodied beings. The Most High is a spirit. Satan and his angels are spirits. We are spirits living in a body. The laws of the Most High require that a spirit have flesh to operate in the physical realm. There are spirits all around us. The reason we cannot see them, they do not have a body. The scriptures reveal to us that the Most High cast Satan and his angels to earth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Because Satan and his angels were cast to earth, they dwell among us. If the Most High could open your eyes, you would not believe the amount of unclean spirits walking among you. You are important to the kingdom of darkness because you have flesh. The scriptures reveal that Satan roams the earth. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Since Satan is roaming the earth, this also indicate that his angels roam the earth as well. Remember, Satan imitate everything the Most High does. If unclean spirits dwell among us, then clean spirits are living among us as well. The angels of the Most High encamp around the righteous to protect and deliver them. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The angels of the Most High are spirits. The angels are also messengers for the Most High. In addition, the angels of the Most High minister to us as well. When the Most High answer your prayers, he sent his messengers, his angels, to reveal to you his response. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and have sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. The Most High worked through his angels. Yah do not need to come off his throne to get things done. Yah spoke the world into existence. If the Most High wants to plague a nation, he would send his angel with the plague. If the Most High wants to bless you, he would send his angel with your blessings. We learn in the scriptures, after Yahshua rebuked Satan, the Most High sent his angels to minister to him. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. 
There are multiple scriptures ensuring us of the benefits of fearing the Most High. When you fear the Most High, He will protect, provide, and fight for you. He that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear Him, and His righteousness unto children's children. To fear the Most High means to respect the supreme ruler of the world and to esteem the Creator. To fear the Most High means to obey the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. To fear the Most High means to worship and praise Him. To fear the Most High means to exalt Him. Fearing the Most High will draw you near to Him. In addition, your personal relationship with the Most High will benefit greatly when you have a reverential fear for the Most High. The scriptures reveal to us that the fear of the Most High is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. When you fear the Most High, Yah is walking with you and your knowledge would increase. Remember, through knowledge will the just be delivered. Fearing the Most High has nothing to do with being afraid. Anything that has to do with Yah's kingdom is of righteousness. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. The Most High do not want you to be afraid to approach him. Whatever you're going through, the Most High wants to be involved to help you. There is no sin too grave that you cannot overcome with the assistance of the Most High. In order to overcome your transgressions, you have to approach the Most High in humility and repentance. The first step is to ask the Most High for help. In order to seek help, you have to speak to the Most High in prayer. Do not be afraid to approach the Most High. To be afraid stems from the unclean spirit of fear coming from the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness used the spirit of fear to paralyze you. Satan do not want you to accomplish your goals and the destiny I set for you. When you are fearful, that is the spirit of fear oppressing you. Remember, the Most High said he did not give us the spirit of fear, but a sound mind. When you are nervous, your heart is racing and you begin to sweat. That is the spirit of fear tormenting you. The Most High wants you to be bold as a lion, wise as a serpent. In the scriptures, when the Most High sent his angels to give his response, the first words the messengers of the Most High would say to the prophets is, Fear not. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Fear opens the door to the spirit of doubt, rejection, anxiety, and many other unclean spirits. The scriptures reveal to us that when an unclean spirit leave a person, it goes to dry places seeking rest. If it cannot find another place of refuge, it will return to its original house and bring other spirits that is stronger to overtake that person. When you forge a covenant with any spirit, you give the spirit permission to invite other powerful spirits to oppress your life. The spirit of fear usually team up with the spirit of doubt, anxiety, and rejection. When Moses died and the Most High called Joshua to lead the Israelites, the spirit of fear was trying to intimidate Joshua. The Most High had to comfort him by telling him not to fear. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. If you do not break the covenant made with the spirit of fear, it will shut you down. The spirit of fear can paralyze you in all areas of your life. A covenant can be forged by verbal confession, your thoughts, and in the spirit realm. Before any spirit can attach itself to you, a covenant is needed. Many people forge and renew covenants in the spirit realm. Everything that has happened to you in the physical realm took place in the spirit realm first. If you find yourself defeating the spirit of fear in the spirit realm, your victory will manifest in the physical realm. You have to know how to identify the spirit of fear in the realm of the spirit. In order to triumph over your enemy, you have to be able to identify your enemy. 
The spirit of fear is not going to show up in the realm of the spirit as itself. The spirit of fear will masquerade itself to deceive you. Israelites, it is important for you to identify the specific spirit tormenting you to better attack that devil. You can pray a general prayer and it will have some effect. However, when you know the culprit, you can better use the sword of the spirit to break free from the bondage faster. There are several ways the spirit of fear appear to you in the spirit realm. I will give you two examples. The first example, when you see yourself being chased by a person, a group of people or something. Sometimes you cannot see the person or thing that is chasing you. The second example, when you see yourself hiding from something. That is two ways the spirit of fear disguises itself to forge a covenant with you. For the people who do not know where the spirit realm is located and how to get there, when you sleep and you dream, that is your spirit, the real you in the spirit realm. Your dream life is the spirit realm. The dreams you have are not to be ignored. Those dreams are revealing important information about your life and the world you live in. The Most High speak to you in a dream. So does the kingdom of darkness. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Most people do not run from something unless they are scared and they're trying to get away. When you are hiding from someone or thing, you are afraid. Only the kingdom of darkness used the spirit of fear to make you afraid. Israelites, you have to learn the language of the spirit realm. The spirit realm used symbols to communicate with you. There are direct dreams and visions. However, most of the time, the most high used symbols to communicate with you in the spirit realm. If you ignore your dream of being chased by something, you do not rebuke the dream. A covenant was forged. The covenant gives the spirit of fear the legal right to oppress your life. Now that the spirit of fear has the right to torment you, you will begin to see the manifestation of the spirit of fear in the physical realm. In most circumstances, the spirit of fear is not going to turn your life upside down right away. The unclean spirit wants to go undetected in your life. Little by little, the spirit of fear will begin to influence you. As the time goes by, it will increase the attack until it has a stronghold on your life. The spirit of fear has a stronghold on the world today. Many people become nervous before public speaking. Their heart starts to race and they begin to sweat. That is a sign that the spirit of fear is tormenting that person. Some people become antisocial because being in a crowd frightened them. That is the manifestation of the spirit of fear oppressing that person. Some people are afraid to speak up because of the backlash they would receive. That is the spirit of fear censoring a person or a group. The spirit of fear is tormenting the heathens and the indigenous population in different ways. Both form of oppression stems from the kingdom of darkness. How many times have we heard a heathen say they are afraid of a black man or a black woman? How many times have we heard the police say they fear for their life? The spirit of fear has programmed into the minds of the heathens that a black person is dangerous. The spirit of fear influenced the heathens to become violent when they are fearful. Violence has become the defense mechanism the heathens use to protect themselves due to the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear removed the ability for the heathens to think properly. Instead of a sound mind, they become full of rage. The spirit of fear has a stronghold on the heathens. The kingdom of darkness used the heathens to oppress the indigenous population by using violence the spirit of fear birthed in them. The heathens continue to renew the covenant with the spirit of fear when they repeatedly say they fear for their life. As wise as the heathens believe they are, the heathens allowed the kingdom of darkness to deceive them into fulfilling the role of vessels of dishonor. As for the indigenous population, the spirit of fear has disarmed them. Instead of protecting themselves, the spirit of fear made them submissive and passive. Because the heathens have a distorted view of the original people, the indigenous people are trying to do everything that they can to appear less dangerous to the heathens. Israelites, regardless to how many times you have altered your appearance, use proper grammar, assimilate into the heathens' culture, the heathens will always view you as a threat and dangerous. The kingdom of darkness has blinded the eyes of the heathens. They will never view you as their equal.
in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Instead of the indigenous population protect themselves when the heathens attack, they submit to the attack. Some Israelites fear the consequences if they stand their ground when a heathen attack them. Because most indigenous people fear the penalty of defending themselves, they willingly hand over their communities and family to the kingdom of darkness. The spirit of fear influenced the indigenous population to believe if they attack each other, the heathens would welcome them. Through the passivity of the indigenous male, the serpent seed took over the earth. The Most High gave his creation, the indigenous people, dominion on earth. I have never heard of a king who labored to build a strong kingdom, turn around and aid his enemy in destroying his people and his kingdom. On the other hand, I have never heard of a king blaming his people for the attack. A true king is going to put his life on the line to protect the kingdom that he built by any means necessary. A lion will fight with all of its might to maintain his kingdom. When another lion take over the pride, the new king do not let the former king and his seed stay. He eliminate the competition to establish his own bloodline. Today, the spirit of fear has paralyzed the indigenous population. They fear for their life if they fight back. The role of a man is to protect, provide, and maintain his kingdom. Today, the indigenous male hand their responsibility to the kingdom of darkness. The spirit of fear has influenced the indigenous man to invite their enemy into all areas of their life. They procreate with their enemies, support their enemies, help their enemies destroy their communities. They do not fight back when the males from other race threaten their communities. Instead, most join their enemy into verbally and physically assaulting his seed. Do you see how the spirit of fear disabled the original man and woman? The spirit of fear will hinder your life in ways you would never believe. Some people will not fulfill what the Most High called them to do because of fear. Some people fear what other people would say about them. If I allow the spirit of fear stop me from uploading videos through censorship, in addition, the disciples of Satan who love to quote 1 Timothy 2 and 12 to try to silence the voice of the Most High, the Israelites and strangers whose spiritual journey is strengthened through this channel would suffer. Because I am aware of the root cause to their objection, I refuse to submit to the kingdom of darkness. The disciples of Satan who only operate in the flesh would view my decision as rebellion. We are to obey the Most High, not the unclean spirits and people who are influenced by these devils. The kingdom of darkness is aware of our gifts and talents. However, the disciples of Satan do not have a clue. That is why Satan is able to manipulate them into becoming a stumbling block to their people. Many people miss the opportunity to find the love of their life because they fear rejection. The spirit of fear has manipulated many indigenous people into rejecting leadership. By doing this, the Israelites will never learn how to lead. How can you build a strong community without leaders? Many Israelites are comfortable in the servant role. Israelites, can you discern how the spirit of fear is causing mishap all over the world? The scriptures say we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Israelites, we should never fight flesh. All of the work we've done trying to convince the heathens we are not the dangerous villains they label us to be has gotten us nowhere. We have been fighting in the flesh for multiple generations. You will fail every time you fight in the flesh. In order to overcome the spirit of fear, you have to attack the spirit of fear directly. Spiritual warfare is a must. You have to counter the attack with the word of the Most High. You can use scriptures such as, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Peace I leave with you. 
my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It is time, Israelites, that you understand how the spirit realm operate. In addition, how your enemies are attacking you in the spirit realm. The Most High will fight for you. Yah has equipped you with everything that you need to succeed. As your knowledge increase, use the wisdom gained to fight back properly. Do not let the spirit of fear disable you. Remember, when you gain victory in the spirit realm, it will manifest in the physical realm. You will never know what can happen if you do not take a step. If our ancestors did not rebel against the slave masters, who knows what our fate would be today? If the Israelites living in Haiti did not fight back in the Haitian Revolution, would they be the first free black republic? With all the odds against them, they defeated their enemies. Do not let the spirit of fear stop you in accomplishing your destiny. If you continue to let the spirit of fear control you, you will never become what the Most High envisioned of you. The Most High gave you power over the entire kingdom of darkness and by no means can they hurt you. Israelites, now that you know how the spirit of fear is destroying our communities, begin to attack that spirit to cause that spirit to flee from you seven ways. The Most High want his people to correctly identify their oppressors. Today, you have learned the name of one of your oppressors, the spirit of fear. You have gained the knowledge to break all covenants with this devil. The Most High has set you free from the spirit of fear. And whom the Most High set free is free indeed. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine.